In this video, I'm going to talk about state on the Aztec network and the data structures we use to store state, namely the types of Merkle trees we use. First, I'll do a quick intro to Aztec, then I'll chat about how private state access works in Aztec and why we nullify state reads and not just state updates. Then I'll go into the specific trees that we have and what they're used for. So what is Aztec? Aztec is a privacy-first rollup on Ethereum. As a rollup, we have a bunch of state that is committed to on Ethereum. Being privacy first, we have a number of different state trees that get committed to. We have a private UTXO-based state tree, which actually involves two trees, and we have a public account-based state tree like many other rollups. Private state is not just one tree, it's two. But why? We use two trees to maintain maximum privacy for users. We have one tree where data is added to, called the note hash tree, and a second tree where we nullify notes, or mark the data as deleted. Technically, we may use more than one tree for each of these, when there is a lot of data on the network, but there will always be at least one tree that is in use. Old trees would be for historic data. Having two trees allows us to update a leaf by adding a new leaf to the note hash tree and add the nullifier of the old leaf to the nullifier tree. That way we can show that the new note hash leaf is the active one and that the old leaf is deleted. When dealing with private data, only the hash of the data is stored in the leaf on our note hash tree and we have a derivation mechanism that ensures nullifiers can be computed deterministically from the hash preimage. This way, no one can tell what data is stored in the leaf unless they already know the leaf's contents, and they won't be able to derive the nullifier and tell if a leaf is active or deleted. Private state access. How does someone access private state on the network? When accessing state, users must prove two things. One, the data they are using is in one of the trees, either the note hash tree or the archive tree, the archive tree being the tree that stores information about historic state of the network. Talk more about that later. And they must also prove that the data they are using has not been nullified. So we have to consider some things when we perform these checks. We have to consider that the private state is not accessed at the head of the chain. Users are accessing this data locally, creating a transaction object with a proof, and sending that to a sequencer and then the sequencers are verifying that the data is valid at some future time. The note hash tree is append only, so it's relatively easy to prove that data was added to the note hash tree. This is not true for checking for nullifiers in the nullifier tree using non-membership proofs. What was valid before may not still be valid, so it is time sensitive, and that is why the sequencer must perform this check. Instead of a user proving that a nullifier of some data is not in the nullifier tree. They provide the nullifier as part of their transaction, and then the sequencer then proves non-membership of the nullifier and inserts that nullifier into the nullifier tree. This way, if multiple transactions include the same nullifier, then only one of them will be included in the block by the sequencer as the others will fail the non-membership proof check. State reads also produce nullifiers and insert new leaves into the note hash tree, just as state updates do. A user passes a nullifier as part of the transaction object, so the sequencer can check if the read is valid, or if the read has already been nullified. State reads are nullified when read, because otherwise, future reads would use the same nullifier, since nullifiers are produced deterministically from the note data. If the same nullifier is passed in multiple transactions, this would reveal information about the two transactions, namely that the two different transactions are reading the same piece of data, and are thus linked in some way. This also reveals that an operation is a read versus a write operation. By nullifying state reads, reads and writes are indistinguishable and future reads of the same data cannot be linked. There is an associated cost though, and that is that reads are more expensive because we need to insert a nullifier and add a new note hash to the note hash tree for a simple read. This also contributes to transaction limits related to the number of note hashes and nullifiers that can be included in a transaction, so we cannot do an unlimited number of reads in a transaction. So what are the details about the trees that we do use? There are five main trees on Aztec. The note hash tree is a Merkle tree with a set of hashes or commitments of the individual notes of contract data. The nullifier tree is a set of nullifiers for notes that have spent spam or other information. The public data tree is a key value store for public contract state. The L1 to L2 message tree is a set of messages sent from L1 to L2. And the archive tree is a set of block headers that have been processed. These headers enable users to prove information about historic Aztec transactions and state. The note hash tree is used to prove existence of private nodes via Merkle membership proofs. It is an append-only Merkle tree, 
which allows for efficient membership proofs. Leads are siloed commitments, which are hashed as a private note data, along with the siloing value. The siloing value in the note hash tree is the contract address of the contract that produces the note. This siloing allows us to store disjoint domains within the same tree, ensuring that a value emitted from one domain cannot affect others. To guarantee the siloing of leaf values, siloing is performed by a trusted protocol circuit and not by an application circuit. The leaves of the tree are also immutable. To delete them, a corresponding nullifier is added to the nullifier tree. As mentioned earlier, nullifiers are not publicly linkable to note hashes, but are general generated deterministically using a secret value. The kernel circuit ensures uniqueness of notes at the protocol level, and the sequencer adds note hashes to the tree when a transaction is included in a block. The protocol does not enforce any constraints on any note hashes emitted by an application. This means that applications are responsible for including a randomness field in the note hash to make the commitment hiding in addition to being binding. If an application does not include randomness, and the note pre-image can be guessed by an attacker, it makes the note vulnerable to pre-image attacks, since the siloing and uniqueness steps by the protocol do not provide hiding. Furthermore, since there are no constraints to the commitment emitted by an application, an application can emit any value as a new note hash, including values that do not actually map to a note hash. The nullifier tree exists as part of global state to prove that a note has not been used in order to prevent double spends. It can actually be used to prevent any action from happening twice, such as preventing reinitialization of state variables or preventing redeployment of contracts. The nullifier tree uses an index Merkle tree where the leaf values are scalar field elements. The index Merkle tree checks uniqueness during leaf insertion, and it checks that the leaf value is greater than the previous index value and less than the next index value. So inserting the same value will fail, so the same nullifier cannot be inserted twice. These index Merkle trees have efficient membership and non-membership proofs, but come with an increased cost to adding, to added leaves. Similar to note hashes, nullifiers are also siloed by contract, which prevents a contract from emitting nullifiers for another contract. Nullifiers can be computed however an application wants. They can be generated from an owner's siloed nullifier secret key, which is unique per account, or from a secret value inside a note, so whoever can read the note can generate the nullifier. Application and contract developers must guarantee determinism in generating the nullifier, otherwise the same note could be spent multiple times. Nullifiers don't have to be linked to a note commitment. They can be used to ensure that any arbitrary action only happens once, such as initializing state, as mentioned before. The public data tree is used for any globally publicly viewable data. Public data is useful for many of the use cases we see in blockchains today, such as transparent token supplies, automated market makers, auditability of borrowing and lending protocols, just to name a few. The tree can be used to store any arbitrary data, and similar to the note hash and nullifier trees, contract data is siloed per contract so that they can only read and write to their own state. The public data tree is an index Merkle tree that is updated by the sequencer when executing public functions. It supports efficient membership and non-inclusion proofs because it's this tree is empty from the start, so a sequencer must prove an empty key with a non-inclusion proof to insert a value or prove membership of, val- of a value associated with the key to update it. The L1 to L2 message tree is an append-only Merkle tree that is used to relay messages from Ethereum to Aztec. A sequencer includes this tree in an Aztec block, and one of these trees is included in each block, assuming that there are pending L1 to L2 messages to be included since the last block. The tree contains some or all of the pending messages that have been emitted from L1 portal contracts. And as messages are inserted into a L1 to L2 message tree in an Aztec block, they are marked as used in the L1 Ethereum contract so they can't be used twice. This tree is an append-only Merkle tree because we only need to prove that a message has been included in a block, but it is paired with a nullifier tree when one of these messages is used on L2 to verify that the message has not been used before. The archive tree is an append-only Merkle tree where the leaves are headers of previous blocks. This tree is required because local execution is proving against historic Aztec state. This allows us to easily prove information about historic transactions or contract state. For example, it can be used to prove information about when a note was inserted into the note hash tree, when a nullifier was included in the nullifier tree. It can be used to prove the validity of a note 
or that it has been included but not yet nullified, or the existence of a public value in a contract. So what's included in these block headers? The header includes historic snapshots of other data trees, including the note hash tree, the nullifier tree, public data tree, and the messages tree. It includes the global variables, such as the block number, timestamp, protocol version, chain ID, Coinbase address, fee recipient, and gas information. And it also includes the body hash, which includes information about the contents of the block, like the L1 to L2 messages, and transaction effects, like the inserted note hashes and inserted nullifiers, the L2 to L1 messages, deployed contracts, public rights, and transaction logs. This slide shows some more information about what is used to create the block header uh, that go in the archive tree. So I hope you found this information helpful and you can read more about what I covered here at docs.aztec.network where we publish our protocol specifications and you can connect with us on x at Aztec Network.